In this tutorial, we are going to talk about kinematics. So, we are going to solve some questions involving kinematics. Okay, so I've got the first question here which is saying, a fighter jet lands on an aircraft at a speed of 73, uh, 73 meters per second. Part 1. What is its acceleration if it stops? in 1.5 seconds due to an arresting cable that snags the jet and bring it to a stop. Part 2. If the jet touches down at the origin, what is its final position? Okay. Now, it is very very important for us to gather our data. Okay. So, data is going to help us to choose which equation is suitable for a particular question okay so remember we have got three main equations for kinematics okay the first formula which you have to know is v final is equal to v initial plus acceleration times time the second formula is the displacement is equal to v initial times time plus half acceleration times time squared the third one is the v, the v final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2 the acceleration times the displacement. Okay, now we need first to come up with data. So let's see the, the information which we have been given. So as we can see, we have the final velocity. Or we can say it is the initial velocity because they are saying that a fighter jet lands an aircraft at a speed of 73 meters per second meaning we are going to assume that that was our initial velocity since it came to stop meaning that the final velocity is going to be zero okay meaning that it was decelerating at that particular time okay so the initial velocity is going to be equal to 73 meters per second then the final velocity when it reaches when it was being arrested it is going to be zero meters per second then we we know the time it took it was 1.5 seconds okay now the question is we need to find the acceleration so among these formulas which which formula is going to be suitable for us to find the acceleration as we can see the first formula is going to be easy for us to find the acceleration because we have the final velocity we have the initial velocity we have the time okay we can't use the sec the third formula or the, the second formula because we don't have the displacement or the distance yeah again we can't use the third formula because there is no time in that formula so the best formula for us to use is going to be the v final is going to be equal to v initial plus at so the v final is basically zero the v initial is 73 then we have plus the acceleration we don't know the time is 1.5 so we can shift 73 to the other side we are going to get negative 73 is going to be equal to a and then we have 1.5 let's divide both sides by 1.5 even here by 1.5 so our acceleration is going to be equal to if we get our calculator we are going to find that negative 73 divided by 1.5 we are getting a 48.666 which is the same as 48.7 so it's going to be negative 48.7 meters per second squared the reason why the answer is negative is just because it was coming to rest okay so it was decelerating in short now the second question is saying if the jet touches down at the origin what is its final position okay so we are saying that the acceleration is negative 48.7 meters per second squared now what would be the final position now from these formulas which have just come up with the three formulas which formula is going to be suitable for us to use okay as you can see we want to find the displacement okay we want to find the displacement we have the final velocity we have the initial velocity and then we want to find the final displacement is either we can use 
this formula or this formula we are supposed to get the same answer but for this one let me use the third formula but you can also try using the second formula you are supposed to find the same answer okay so the second formula the third formula is the v, v final v initial squared plus 2 a s so we are trying to find the s let's plug in the values so we have got the final velocity which is zero squared has to be equal to we have 73 squared plus 2 the acceleration is negative 48.7 times what let me get rid of this to create space okay so we have the fine the displacement is the one we are trying to find so we can shift this part to the other side we are going to have negative 73 squared we put it in brackets okay it's going to be equal to we are going to have um negative 48 times 2 which is going to give us negative 96 we have s we divide both sides by negative 98 even here by nine, negative 98 okay so now let's plug in the values so if we are to plug in the value we punch on our calculator we have negative and negative will cancel we have got negative and negative there so our displacement is going to be equal to so we say 73 squared divided by 98 okay so I'm getting 54.37 54.37 meters so this is the same as we can just say 53 point four meters okay so using the second formula we should be able to find the same answer okay that is it for this question we go to the next question number two the question is saying a bmw car moving at a constant speed of 38 meters per second passes a tropper on a toyota land cruiser uh, hidden behind a small hill two seconds later or two seconds after the speeding car passes small hill the tropper sets out from the billboard to catch the car accelerating at a constant rate of 2.4 meters per second squared how long does it take the tropper to catch up with the bmw now what we need to understand is that these two things we have got the bmw here and the land cruiser so what is happening there is that we have the velocity for the bmw the initial velocity we have been told that it is that eight meters per second but if we check the land cruiser the land cruiser start uh, it start from rest meaning that the initial velocity for the land cruiser we have not been given meaning is zero meters per second okay now let's go to time we are saying that from this point here the question is saying that two seconds after the speeding car passes the small hill meaning that what was happening here is that the displacement is going to be the same now it's going to be the same if the time in short this time the land cruiser delayed by two seconds or the bmw was ahead with two seconds so it's either you can say it is t plus two and then here we are going to put t or you can say where there's land cruiser you can say t minus two and then here you put just t which is just the same okay so the bmw was ahead with two seconds that's why we are saying that it's going to be t plus two okay and then the land cruiser is going just to be t that is the information which we know at uh, 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 as at now now let's let's go to acceleration we are saying that the bmw was uh, at constant speed so the moment when you hear to say the constant speed the acceleration is zero okay and we have been told that the land cruiser we have the acceleration the acceleration for the land cruiser is just basically 2.4 meters per second squared so that is the data which we have now from here as long as this data is true 
and is correct. Meaning that these two guys, the, the BMW and the Land Cruiser, they are going to travel with the same displacement or with the same distance. So we can say that uh, the distance, I'm going to call the distance for, for BMW as one, the distance for Land Cruiser to be two. So I'm going to say that uh, the distance for, for the Land Cruiser has to be equal to the distance for uh, the, the, the BMW. Okay, so we know that from the information which you have, we have got the initial velocity, we have the time, we have the acceleration, meaning that the best formula for us to use is going to be, the displacement is going to be equal to the V final, the V initial, sorry, plus, we are going to have this. This is the information which we are going to use. Okay, now from there, we can see that if we go to the... Uh, land cruiser i'm going to, to to call this one d1 so it's going to be d1 the initial velocity we have been told is c 38 times t so where there is t we know that where the t is going to be t plus e, two okay and then we know that the acceleration is zero meaning the whole of this part here is going to be zero meaning we are done with d1 let's go to d2 so d2 is going to be equal to we know that the initial is going to be the initial times t we have this the initial velocity is zero this part here is going to be zero so we're going to have d2 is going to be equal to the half the acceleration we've been told that is 2.4 times t squared t is just the t itself okay so we can we can say that d2 is going to be equal to we have 2.4 which is going to be 2.4 uh, times half which is 0 0.5 so I'm getting 1.0 it's, gi it's giving me 1.2 t squared so we have got those two things now to create space let me get rid of this we want to find how long the time so the d1 is going to be equal to d2 so d1 is just basically 38 open brackets uh, t plus 2 has to be equal to d2 is just basically 1.2 t squared that is what we have now from there what we need to understand is that we are going to have this now we are going to say that 8 times t is going to give us 38 t plus and then 38 times 2 38 times 2 is going to give us 76 has to be equal to 1.2 t squared. So I can just shift this part to the left hand side. Then it's going to be, I'm going to shift this side to the, the left hand side. It's going to be negative 1. Point, it's going to be negative 1.2 t squared, negative 1.2 t squared plus 38 t plus 76 has to be equal to this part we are meaning zero. So as we can see now, we have come up with the uh, a quadratic equation this for us to solve t here we are supposed to use the quadratic equation so we have um negative 1.2 t squared plus 38 t squared and then oh it's just t sorry and then plus 76 has to be equal to zero so as we can see here we have a this is b this is c and then we use the quadratic equation which is going to be t is going to be equal to uh, negative b plus or minus the square root over b squared minus 4ac everything has to be divided by 2a so you can plug in the values so you have um, negative we have b which is 38 plus or minus in the square root there we have b which is 38 squared minus 4 the a value is negative 1.2 then the c is 76 everything has to be divided by 2 times the a is just basically negative 1.2 okay so we continue there we are going to see that um our t is going to be equal to uh 38 negative 38 plus or minus what is going to be in the in the square root there so in the square root we have 38 squared which is 1444 
1,444. Now negative and negative will give us positive. Then we are going to have 4. We are going to have 4 plus 4 times 1.2. Uh, 1.2 and then times 76 76 which is giving me 364.8 364.8 okay I don't have space that side then we have uh, negative negative 1.2 times 2 which is giving me negative 2.4 Okay, now let's get rid of this. We create space. So the, f the equation which we have now at hand is um, a t is going to be equal to, I can get the square root, um, we have got 1,444 plus 364.8. I'm getting a uh, let me redo it. 1,444 plus 364.8. I'm getting a 1,808.8. Now I get the square root of this one. I'm getting a 42. I'm getting a 42.53. Okay. I'm getting 42.53999, but I'll just round it off and I'll I'll say it's going to be negative 338 plus or minus. Then we have got it. Um, what do we have? We have um, 42.53. Uh, okay. Everything divided by negative 2.4. Now from here we know what to do. It's going to be T is going to be equal to negative 38 plus 42.53 divided by negative 2.4 I can get rid of this to create space and then or t is going to be equal to negative 38 minus 42 point um, 53 everything divided by 2.4 okay so let's start with this one we have t is going to be equal to we have 38 38 plus 42.53 so it's giving me um oh, it's supposed to be negative 38 plus 42.53 it's giving me 4.53 then i divide this one by 2 point negative 2.4 okay so it's giving me um, negative 1.9 seconds it's not 1.8875 but I'll just round it off to 1.9 then we also have or t is going to be equal to so we have that other one which is negative uh, 38 minus 42.53 then I'm getting negative 80.4 negative 80.53 I divide this one by negative um, negative 2 point negative 2.4 so it's giving me uh, it's giving me 33.55 which is positive now negative and negative will cancel that three point point five five seconds now we know that time can never be negative meaning that our time in this case is going to be equal to 33 point you can just say 33.6 seconds okay so we have got the third question which is saying Kathy test her new sports car by racing with stain an experienced lesson both start from rest but Kathy leaves the starting line 1.00 seconds after stain does okay stain moves with a constant acceleration of 3.5 meters per second squared 
while Cathy maintains an acceleration of 4.90 meters per second. But A, find the uh, find the time find the time at which Cathy overtakes Stan. But two is saying that uh, find the distance she travels before she catches him. And but three, the speed of both cars at the at, at the eastern Cathy overtakes 10. Okay, so what we need to understand here is just simple logic. We need to come up with data. So we are going to write the data for Cathy this side. I'm going to say K and then the data for uh, the data for Stain, I'm going to say S. Okay, so what data do we know for Stain and what data do we know for Cathy? Now, what we need to understand is that the acceleration for Cathy is just basically 4.9 meters per second squared. That is what we have been told. Okay, let me just put 4.9 to create space here. So we have the acceleration for Cathy 4.9. What else do we have? Now, they are saying that this point here, they are saying that Cathy leaves the starting line one second after Stain does. Okay, meaning that that is one, it is t minus one. As long as the time is going, the time is going to be the same. The time has to be the same so that the displacement has to be the same. Okay, so to maintain the distance to be the same, so we have to consider this. They're saying that Cathy leaves the starting line one second after Stan does. So Cathy left after one second, meaning that it's supposed to be t minus one. Or if you want to put this information to where there's stain, meaning stain was ahead uh, with the t plus 1, which is just the same thing. So we're going to say that this part is going to be t minus 1. Then the acceleration for stain, we have been told that it is uh, uh, 3.5. Then the time is going just to be t. What else do we know? Okay, so the displacement has to be the same. So I'm going to say the distance for k, which is Cathy, the distance for this uh, stain. So what is happening there is that uh, at this instant, as long as the time we have modified the time to say the time for Cathy, for them to travel at the same distance, T for Cathy is supposed to be the time minus the one second because she was behind one second. Okay, so it's going to be the distance for Cathy has to be equal to the distance for stain. Now, we know that from here we can use the formulas very simple and straightforward okay so what do we know we can see that from the data which we have the formula which can work is going to be uh, the displacement is going to be equal to the initial times t plus half and then uh, a t squared but we know that these guys they started from rest meaning that they find the initial velocity is going to be zero for both so the initial velocity is zero even here is zero so we are going to see that the d let, let me put k for Cathy is going to be this part is going to be zero because the initial velocity is zero it's going to be half and then we have the acceleration 4.9 the time is just basically 9 t minus 1 we have to square it so to modify this one for Cathy is going to be equal to we know that 1 over 2 times uh, 4.9 is going to give us what? We get our calculator. It's going to be uh, 0. same as 0. 0.5 times 4.9. It's going to be 2.4, 2.45. 2 2.45. Then you have t minus 1 squared. So that is 4. Uh, that is for for Cathy. Now let me put it here. It's going to be t. It's going to be equal to 2.45. Then we have t minus 1 squared. Let's now talk about um, stain. So it's going to be the same formula we have for stain. has to be equal to. Since the initial velocity is going to be 0, we are going to remain with this. And then... It's going to be half the acceleration for Stenny. We have been told that is 3.5. Then t is just t squared. So this is going to give us. Uh, we have 0 0.5 times 
3.5 I'm getting 1.7 1.7 t squared so that is the displacement for 10 what 1.7 t squared so since the displacement was the same we can set them equal to each other so we are saying that the displacement for Cathy has to be equal to the displacement for Sten. So the displacement for Cathy is just basically, um, oh, this was displacement and not time. So it is just basically 2.45 open brackets. Then we have T minus 1 squared has to be equal to the displacement for Sten is just basically 1.5 T squared. Okay, and then from here, let me just get rid of this to create space. So what we, well, what we are going to have now from here is um, the simplest way you can expand this and come up with the quadratic function or quadratic equation. Use the quadratic equation and find the time. But I'm going to use the shortcut here, which is going to be the same. So you should use, you, you follow this step and then you are going to follow, uh, you can also use the quadratic equation you are supposed to find the same time so what i'm going to do here is uh, i'm going to square i'm going to square both sides so if i square this side then i also square this side meaning that if i square this square it's going we are going to remain with this now it's going to be the square root of 4.5 times this is going to be like this this is now going to be like this minus one because th this two is going to be removed just because of the square root then this part is going to be the same we are going to have the square root of 1.7 times t because of this squared is going to go okay so we can say that what is the square root the square root of uh, 2.45 is going to give us 1.1.565 1.565 1 uh, okay and then uh, we have t minus 1. This part here, the square root of 1.7 is going to give us 1.3 1. 1. Uh, It's uh, 1.3038, but I've just rounded it off to 1.303 so that I have three significant figures. Then I have times t. So what I'm going to have now here is, uh, is this. My goal is to find 40, meaning that eh, I'm going to say this times everything inside there. I'm saying this times everything inside. We're going to have 1.565t 1. 1. minus 1, 1 times eh, everything there. We're going to have 1.565. And then it's going to be equal to 1.304t. Um, so we can shift the t to the other side. We can shift this to the other side and this to the other side. Okay, so we are going to have uh, 1.565t. If I shift that one, it's going to be minus 1.34t has to be equal to this negative is going to be positive. This side, we are going to have this. Okay, so I have one point. I have 1.535 minus 1.3. 304 I'm getting 0 0.261 0 0.261 has to be equal to 1.565 so I divide this one by 0 0.261 here there is t here then I divide it by 0 0.261 so as we can see these two will cancel we we'll have t is going to be equal to we have 1.565 then divided by 0 0.261 okay uh, let me do it I'm saying we have 1 point, 1 1.565 uh, then we divide this one by 0 0.2 0 0.26 okay 261 i'm getting 5.999 which is just the same as 6 now this is just due to 
which is just 6.0 seconds this is just the, uh, the reason why i'm finding this is just because i was rounding off but if 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 you can just take the whole uh values without rounding it off then you are going to get it's going to be similar it's going to be uh ne maybe it's going to be similar to six or it's going to be near six so here we found that it was 5.9999 which is the same as just six okay so that is the time so after now finding the time that is the time at which Kathy overtook Stan that is six seconds okay so you can also use the quadratic equation which is going to give you the same answer so if we have t is going to be equal to 6.0 seconds then let's go to the next one we have what else do we have we have the first, the second question they're asking us to find uh the distance the distance she traveled before she catches him so the the distance kathy travels before uh catching what before catching stan so what we need to understand here is that we have the time so it's just basically the distance is going to be equal to the initial velocity times t plus half a t squared so the initial velocity was zero this part is going to be zero so the d is going to be equal to the half a t squared we have the time which is six half the acceleration for kathy is um is 4.9 that's what we've been taught from the question okay 4.9 and then the time is 6.0 we square it so what are we finding so we should be able to get we should be able to get um we have um, 0 0.5 1 over 2 is 0 0.5 times 4.9 then times 6 squared okay so the distance i'm getting here what is the distance which we are getting the distance i'm getting here is uh, oh uh we say that uh, kathy was moving with uh, constant not so meaning that uh, we don't expect to have um we don't expect to have um the the so the formula which is going to to work here is going to be this one it's going to be uh, we are trying to find we're trying to find the what the distance okay so the distance Kathy travels that is what we are trying to find so to find the distance okay it's the distance yes we are finding the distance it is the same formula I thought maybe we are finding the velocity the, the second question is the one which they're asking us to find the velocity so the distance is going to be the same uh the v sorry the distance is going to be equal to v initial times t plus half a t squared so the initial velocity is zero we don't expect to have this part here we are going to have d is going to be equal to half uh, a t squared so the distance for kathy is going to be the acceleration 4.9 then we have um six squared okay so after squaring what do you expect to have okay so what do we expect to have so it's going to be the distance for kathy it's going to be equal to uh 0 0.5 times 4.9 because 4.9 was um yeah was the acceleration for kathy okay and then we have times times six squared which is giving me 88.2 meters that is the distance for kathy and then the second question is asking us to find the speed of the speed of both cars at instant kathy overtook stan so we want to find the speed of the uh both cars so to find the speed of both cars it's going to be very much easy for us which we know that the final speed is going to be the initial speed times t plus this so uh sorry, sorry, sorry. this formula is uh, the v final has to be equal to 
v initial plus 80 so the initial velocity is zero we can plug in the values we are talking about Cathy. we start with Cathy. okay so starting with Cathy, we'll see that the time the time is going to be this is going to be zero plus if we start with Cathy, we know that this time here minus one for them to reach at the they are saying that the speed of both cars at the eastern Cathy over took 10 meaning that the time now is supposed to be one minus the, the same time we we use the data for Cathy. it's going to be the same we're talking about so it's going to be the acceleration we have found that it was um the, the acceleration we've been given is 4.9 the time is t minus one so t is six okay so we're going to see that the the velocity at that instant is going to be six minus one is going to be five so we have five times 4.9 which is going to be 24 24.5 24.5 meters per second that is the going to be the velocity of uh, Cathy now to find the velocity of stain we are going to use the same the same formula which is going to be v final v initial plus e. 80 the fi the initial velocity is zero we know that so we're going to have um 80 so we plug in the values we have acceleration 3.5 times 6 okay so v final is going to be equal to we have 3.5 times 6 which is giving me 21 21 meters per second so this is the velocity for for 10 and this is the velocity for for Cathy. okay